welcome again to this particular session and in this particular session what we are going to talk about in fact in this particular session we are going to pick up a very heavy topic that is higher purchase trading system and higher purchase data system but before we start upon this particular topic let me actually clarify one thing very important that if you happen to be old course student correct then this topic is not meant for you. This particular topic is relevant only and only for new syllabus student. So if you are having the old course, only topics prior to this one you need to do. And if you happen to be new course student, then you have to stay down over here itself and you will have to do this particular topic. Higher purchase trading system. And of course, we are going to talk about higher purchase data system basically these are two topics so question will be given and question may ask us to solve the question by applying higher purchase trading system or by applying higher purchase data system whichever system we may apply but one thing common is that first of all we shall have to prepare a stock in go down account also known as a stock in shop account whichever system i am adopting my first target should be to prepare stock in go down account stock in shop account and then the stock in go down and shop account are one and same thing then higher purchase stock account and third one is higher purchase data system higher purchase data account once i have prepared the three accounts then i can find out the results as i told you either by applying higher purchase trading system now suppose the question says that you have to solve the question by applying higher purchase trading system then besides preparing these three accounts in order to find out the profit i will have to prepare higher purchase trading account higher purchase trading account higher purchase trading account correct and if question tells me or rather ask me to solve the question by applying higher purchase data system then besides these three accounts i will have to find out profit by preparing higher purchase adjustment account so these are the things which you need to know in the beginning now it's a pretty complicated topic not an easy one so i will try to actually make it absolutely as easy as possible for you so first of all you will have to pay attention and you will have to write a lot along with me because we have to comprehend both these topics first of all let's have a look over here and let's try to figure out example i'm giving you an example first of all before we outset on solving the question now let us say there is a small shopkeeper or a small trader correct and some information regarding this particular trader is given this particular trader let us say is having opening stock let us say in his go down opening stock is worth rupees 10000 he is already having opening stock of rupees 10,000. And in the current year, he purchased <coughs> some items, purchased goods. Let us say his purchases were to the extent of 1,20,000. 1 1,20,000. And by the end of the year, he is still having closing stock of 30,000. Suppose if you presume yourself as the trader, correct a small trader remember one thing both these methods have been developed from the perspective of small traders who operate in small areas in township areas in village areas correct in far flung areas and who generally sell a small item items of a smaller value on installment system so in order to find out their profit these two systems have been developed now let us say a small trader, he is having opening stock of 10,000 in his go down or shop already and he purchased some items, let us say 1,20,000 worth of goods and at the end of the year, let us say he is having closing stock of 30,000. What does it mean? Suppose if you are having 10,000 worth of goods in your hand today and you are and you have purchased 1,20,000 more goods, so that means total goods in your hand should be 1,30,000 by the end of the current year. But if I am telling that at the end of the current year, you are having only what we call 30,000 worth of closing stock, what does it mean? It means out of 1,30,000, you have sold out 1 lakh worth of goods. Correct? So that means out of 1,30,000, you have sold out 1 lakh worth of goods. That is why you are having closing stock 30,000. That means this 1 lakh is nothing, but I will call it goods sold. However, this is the cost price of the goods because 
you had 10,000 worth of stock with you and you purchased 120,000. So total cost is 130,000. And out of that, only 30,000 worth of goods is in your go down at the end of the year. That means in the current year, you sold out 1 lakh worth of goods. But these goods, which you have sold out, this is the cost price of the goods sold. Obviously, as a trader, you are not going to sell them for rupees 1 lakh. You have sold out goods costing 1 lakh. Quite obviously, you will sell them at a pretty higher price. Let us say this trader sold these goods. We will call it goods sold on hire. Or I will simply say his sales or should I say goods sold, goods sold on hire. Goods sold on hire means he sold out these goods on hire purchase system. Correct. So obviously when he is going to sell the goods on higher purchase system, he is not going to ask the purchaser to pay only 1 lakh because 1 lakh is the cost price. Otherwise, what he will earn? Let us say he agrees into a sort of agreement with the purchaser and tells him that I will sell you these goods for rupees 1 lakh 50,000. 1 lakh 50,000. And you pay me monthly installment of let us say 15,000. Suppose if I am asking this, if I am asking the purchaser to pay a monthly installment, let us say of 10,000 rupees, monthly installment, monthly installment, let us say monthly installment happens to be rupees 10,000. That means if you are the purchaser and I am the seller, I am asking you to pay 150000 on monthly basis uh, and you pay me each month 10,000 rupees. So how many installments you will have to pay to settle 150000 Obviously, 15 installments. 15 installments. So all in all, we may say that the seller sold out goods which are having a cost price of rupees 1 lakh. Seller sold out goods having a cost price of 1 lakh. Is it clear to you? But he sold them goods sold on hire at higher purchase price. He, he sold out these goods at a price of 1 lakh 50,000 rupees 1 lakh 50,000. Quite obviously his margin or profit is equal to rupees 50,000. Is it clear to you or not? Is it clear? That means we can find out the rate of margin on cost and also on goods sold on hire as we used to do it under branch. Correct? So rate on rate of margin, rate of margin. Now what will be his rate of margin? His rate of margin on cost will be equal to 50,000 divided by 1 lakh. 50,000 is the margin and below I have written in the denominator cost. So his rate of margin on cost will be 1 by 2. That means if 2 rupees is the cost, I am charging you a margin of rupee 1. Indirectly, I am selling these goods to you at a price of rupees 3. Similarly, we can also compute rate of margin on higher purchase price. Because higher purchase price is 1 lakh 50,000 and I am earning a profit of 50,000. So that means my rate of margin is 1 by 3. Correct? That means if higher purchase price is 3, in that I am getting a margin of rupee 1. So my cost will be 2. So these things you need to keep in your mind. Number 1. And second point, we have already seen that how many installment the purchaser is supposed to pay us 15 installment. What is the amount of one installment in this case amount of one installment is rupees 10,000. Let us say this agreement took place in the month. Let us say this particular agreement took place. Let me stretch a line first of all then I will write the dates. Okay here. Let us say this particular agreement took place on 1st of January 2024. Correct. This agreement took place on 1st of January 2024. So, on this particular date, I have sold the goods, goods sold on hire, worth rupees 1,50,000. I have sold the goods to the purchaser for rupees 1,50,000. 
obviously i'm not going to tell the cost price to the purchaser i know that cost price is one lakh but i sold the goods on hire at a higher purchase price this is higher purchase price goods sold on hire at higher purchase price is equal to one lakh fifty thousand and i'm asking the fellow to pay me monthly installment one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so all in all he is supposed to pay me 15 installment no doubt about that because one installment is of rupees ten thousand each so quite obviously the purchaser is supposed to pay me ten thousand each month at the let us say at the end of each month and that means he will all in all pay me 15 installment is it clear to you this is the point you need to first of all understand now i am asking you a very tough question let us say if the agreement has taken place let us say if the agreement has taken place on 1 1 2024 as i wrote earlier and i'm selling the goods to you for rupees 1 lakh 50 thousand and i'm asking you to pay me each month correct pay me each month rupees 10 thousand so could you tell me in this year in the current year that is which is stretching from 1 1 2024 till 31st of 12 2024 in this accounting year how many installment you are supposed to pay me would you pay me entire 15 installments if the installment is on monthly basis at the most in this accounting year you can pay me only 12 installments is it clear to you or not by the end of this accounting year that means 12 installment logically i should receive from the purchaser is it clear to you or not that means in the current accounting year entire lot of 15 installment will not become due total installment which will become due in the current accounting year will be equal to 12 and quite obviously three installment will become due in the next year we may also say that out of 15 installment total installments are 15 now pay attention here these are very important terminology because in order to solve the question you have to acclimatize yourself with the terminologies which we are going to use that is the reason this particular topic appears pretty tough to the student fraternity simply because of the fact that they are not able to grasp the terminologies which are used while what we call preparing the accounts first of all you need to understand in this particular case total installment about total installment total installment is equal to 15 correct i have sold you one lakh fifty thousand worth of goods asking you to pay me what we call ten thousand rupees each month so total installments are 15 but the point here you need to understand that entire lot of 15 installment will not become due in the current accounting year because in the current accounting year there could be only 12 months correct so at the most in the current accounting year total installment which may become due could be only 12 so first of all you need to understand that total installment can be broadly divided into two important segments one installment due during the year we will use this word so often during this particular topic installment it's a pretty long word installment due during the year installment due during the year means during the current year installment due during the year so out of 15 how many installment could become due during the current year could you tell me sir 12 yes absolutely that means total 12 installment could become due in the current year indirectly it also means by the end of the current year three installment will not become due because three installment will fall in the next year so out of 15 12 will become due in the current year but at the same time installment not due during the year not pay attention not due during the year not due during the year installment not due during the year would be not due during the year will be equal to how much will be equal to three 
will be equal to 3. Is it clear to you or not? Now you need to understand some important facts. For example, total installment are 15 and if I am going to multiply it with rupees 10,000, that means total installment amount, that means total amount the purchaser is supposed to pay me 1,50,000. Is it clear to you? So it means total installment is also known as total installment is nothing but your goods sold on hire. G-S-O-H, goods sold on hire at higher purchase price. So whenever I would say total installment, immediately it must strike in your mind that we are referring to goods sold on hire. You must have seen because we sold the goods to the purchaser on hire at higher purchase price of 150000 and total installment will always be equal to goods sold on hire at higher purchase price, number one. Number two, installment due during the year. Now, in the current accounting year, total installment will be due 12. Indirectly, it means, indirectly, it means total amount which will become due in the current accounting year will be equal to 1,20,000. That means out of 1,50,000 rupees which the purchaser is supposed to pay me, but out of that 1,50,000, at the most, he can pay me 1,20,000 in the current accounting year, simply because 12 installment will become due. So 1,20,000, 1,20,000 he can pay me. But by the end of the current year, he cannot pay me rupees 30,000 because 3 installment will not become due. Is it clear to you or not? Is it clear to you or not? Installment due during the year. Now, installment due during the year is also known as amount due from data because these installment have become due. These, these installment have become due during the accounting year. So that means the purchaser is our data. He is supposed to pay us 1,20,000 in the current accounting year. In the current accounting year. So in the current accounting year, our total data are worth rupees 1,20,000, not 1,50,000. Because three installment haven't become due. Unless and until things will become due, we cannot term the fellow as our dead data. It is very important to note. However, one more aspect here is that total installments are due during the year. But it is not necessary that customer will pay all the 12 installment. Right? He may pay or he might not pay. Both possibilities are there. Let us say out of 12 installment, he has paid only 10 installments. That means installment due during the year will further be segregated into two parts. Correct? Installment due during the year will be segregated or divided into further two parts which you need to understand. That is cash received because we are supposed to receive 1,20,000 from the customer. Customer means the person who has purchased the goods. He is our customer. Everything is being viewed and analyzed from the perspective of the seller which you need to keep in your mind. Correct? So, as for installment due during the year, as I told you, it will be further segregated into two important segments. That is cash received. It, so, it could be a possibility that the customer may pay entire lot of 12 installments. Correct? So, in that case, I will simply write cash received as 1,20,000. But, presuming that he has paid only 10 installments, suppose the customer out of 12 due during the year could pay only what we call, let us say, 10 installments. So, 10 installments we have received, 10 into 10,000, let us say. So, that means out of 1,20,000, which we were supposed to receive from the customer, we could receive only 1 lakh. Installment due during the year were 12. Out of that, 10 received and 2 installment not received. So, Installment which were due during the year but not received will be termed as installment due, installment due but not received. Installment were due but not received. Installment due but not received. What does it show? It shows directly or indirectly it means First of all, let me write the amount. Two installments were due but did not, we could not receive 20,000 rupees. Now, installment which were due but not received simply shows the closing balance of the higher purchase debtors account. 
This 20,000 is nothing but your closing balance of higher purchase debtors account. Closing balance of higher purchase debtor. Because in the current year, your total debtors were worth rupees 1,20,000 and not 1,50,000. Don't commit this mistake. Because due amount was 1,20,000. So your higher purchase debtors were 120. Out of that, you have received 1 lakh and 20,000 you didn't. So quite obviously, by the end of the year, 20,000 is, is still due from the debtors because whatever was due was not received and debtors are supposed to pay us 20,000. Is it clear to you or not? Terminology is very important. First of all, I told you total installment. Total installment is nothing but your goods sold on higher at higher purchase price. Then total installments are segregated into two elements, installment due during the year and installment not due during the year. First of all, we are analyzing installment due during the year. Because in the current year there are 12 months, only 12 installments could become due. So, either we will receive the full amount which was due during the year, or perhaps we may receive some portion of the amount and some portion may still remain unpaid. Presuming only 10 installments have been received, so we may say that cash received is equal to 10 into 10,000, that is equal to 1 lakh, while two installments which were due in the current accounting year could not be received. So, 2 into 10,000, 20,000 signifies that at the end of the year, closing balance of debtors is equal to 20,000. Is it clear to you or not? And in the beginning of the accounting year, higher purchase debtors balance was 120 because due amount was 120. But by the end of the year, they have paid 1 lakh, so 20,000 is still due from them. So, you need to understand that is whenever in the question it will be given installment due but not received. So, you sh it should strike to you that it is nothing but closing balance of debtors. Is it clear to you? Now, we come to the other part of the installment which were not due during the year. Now, installment which were not during the year. Suppose if you are the seller, I sold you 1,50,000 worth of goods. Obviously, I'm supposed to receive from you 1,50,000 in entirety. But in the current year, I'm supposed to receive 1,20,000. Correct? You are not responsible to pay 30,000 in the current year. In the current year, you are not responsible because three installment will not fall due in the current year. Because you are not responsible, you are the customer, you are not supposed to pay in the current year 30,000. So, I will consider as if these goods are still mine. Are you getting my point or not? When you are not supposed to pay for these goods in the current year, so I will presume as if I haven't sold you 30,000 worth of goods in the current year itself. Out of 150, I will presume I have sold you only 120. So, that is the reason out of 1,50,000 worth of goods, I will presume that 30,000 worth of goods are still or sh uh, these goods still belong to the what we call uh, uh, seller and not to the purchaser. And that is the reason actually installment not due during the year is nothing but it is known as closing balance of higher purchase stock account. Closing balance of higher purchase stock account. Higher purchase stock account. Higher purchase stock account is also known as stock with customer account. It is also known as stock with customer account. Stock with customer account. It is known as stock with customer account because this is this stock is with the customer, but we will consider it as our stock. Because you are not supposed to pay this amount in the current year. Very important. Once again, I am reminding, because you need to acquaint yourself with all this terminology, very important point. First of all, total installment is nothing but your goods sold on higher at higher purchase price, which in this case is 1,50,000. Total installment will definitely have two what we call important elements. Installment due during the year, installment not due during the year. Installment due during the year simply refer to as higher purchase debtors. That means debtors are supposed to pay 120 in the current accounting year. Whereas installment which is not due in the current, which are not due in the current year, will be referred to as closing balance of higher purchase stock account. Installment not due during the year. Installment not due. Don't get confused. Here I have written installment due but not received. Here I have written installment not due during the year, not due during the year. So if installment are not due during the year, that means it is not yet a part of sale. Correct? So that is why you will consider, seller will consider as if these goods belong to him only and he will consider him as what we call closing stock. So these are the points, first of all, which you need to gather. Very, very important. Is it clear to you or not? 
these are the points. Might be outside. But talking to what we call on the staff at this particular moment, just pay attention. Suddenly the flow, yeah, coming back to the, all these things. So first of all, it is very important for us that we need to get ourselves acquainted with all the terminologies, correct? Once the terminologies are, once the terminologies are actually perfected, the next thing is that now we need to learn how the, how we have to prepare the accounts, correct? Let us say in this question, I want to compute the profit. So I have two alternatives. I may use what we call higher purchase trading system or I may use higher purchase data system to find out the profit. But whatever system I would like to follow, I will have to prepare first of all these three accounts which I just told you. So let's start. As I told you, the first thing which I need to do, I means the seller, everything will be done in the books of seller only. The seller will prepare one stock in shop account. Remember one thing in the question, if information is given with respect to stock in shop account, then only you will prepare it because sometimes we may feel, we, we may see later on in the upcoming sessions, correct, that uh, sometimes this account is not prepared also. Stock in shop account is also known as stock in go down account. So many times I have already told you. We are going to prepare this particular account one. So I will write here stock in shop account. Okay, four lines are enough. Then besides that, I will have to prepare higher purchase stock account. Higher purchase stock account is also known as higher purchase stock account. It is also known as goods sold on higher account. Goods sold on higher account. And it is also known as a stock with customer account. A stock with customer account. It is also known as a stock with customer account. A stock with customer account. Correct? Now, after having framed higher purchase stock account, now we will have to prepare installment due account installment due means installment due during the year account installment due account now installment due account is also known as higher purchase debtors account is also known as higher purchase debtors account so first of all we will have to prepare these three accounts correct once we will learn the art of preparing these three accounts then then we can solve the question through trading system or higher purchase data system. Suppose, first of all, I would like to solve the question through higher purchase data system. In that case, after having prepared these three accounts, I will have to prepare an additional account that is higher purchase adjustment account. Higher purchase adjustment account. This word might be striking to you as if you might have heard it earlier. Yes, you are not wrong. Under stock and data system, do you remember? In branches, you have prepared so many times branch adjustment account. Similarly, here we are going to prepare higher purchase adjustment account. Now, if you remember under branches, in branch adjustment account, we used to write loadings only and we used to get the gross profit, if you remember. Similarly, here we will write the loadings only. Higher purchase adjustment account. That means if I want to find out the profit through higher purchase data's account, besides these three, I will have to prepare this account to find out the profit. And let us say, if I want to find the profit through higher purchase trading system, higher purchase trading system, in that case, after having prepared first three accounts, I will have to prepare another account that is higher purchase trading account. Higher purchase trading account. This is all you have to do. Higher purchase trading account. Correct. Now I will explain all these things in detail. Now let us first of all start for preparing 
the stock in shop account. Now try to remember the information of the question. What was the opening stock in the shop or in the go down of the seller? 10,000. If you remember, so first of all, I am going to write here opening stock. Remember one thing, the stock in shop account is always prepared at cost. This account is always prepared at cost. So 10,000 worth of goods having a cost price of 10,000 were with the seller in the beginning of the accounting year. Then he, in the current year, he purchased some goods. Purchased. Purchases. 1,20,000 worth of goods he purchased in the current year. Correct? And by the end of the year, he had closing stock of 30,000. And I told you over there also, indirectly it means out of 1,30,000, if you are having in hand at the end of the year only 30,000 worth of goods, indirectly it means you have sold out goods costing 1 lakh. So first of all, I will balance this account, correct? And then I am going to write here, goods sold on hire. I will write in short form, goods sold on hire. Remember one thing, this good sold on hire is at cost. It is not at higher purchase price. This is the cost price of the goods which you sold. So goods costing 1 lakh you sold. And for how much you sold? You sold it for 1 lakh 50,000. So after having prepared this account, first of all, what I am going to do now, I am going to write in higher purchase stock account or goods sold on higher account or stock with customer account opening balance in this question there is no opening balance in this particular account so i will simply write dash now we just sold the goods goods sold on higher because this account is always prepared at higher purchase price so that is the reason i cannot write goods sold on higher at one lakh in this particular account However, we know the higher purchase price of goods sold on hire. Higher purchase price of goods sold on hire is 1,50,000. It is given to us in the question. Correct? Goods costing 1 lakh were sold for 150. So that is the higher purchase price. However, we can find out the higher purchase price in this manner also. For example, the cost of the goods sold is 1 lakh. And we have just computed the rate of profit on cost. Because goods sold on cost is 1 lakh, so I will have to apply the rate of margin on cost. Rate of margin on cost is 1 by 2, that is 50,000. So I can also find out higher purchase price in this manner. Is it clear? So 1 lakh 50,000 worth of goods we have sold. Don't let it skip out of your memory. Goods sold on higher, this is gold sold on higher at higher purchase price now. And I told you, goods sold on higher at higher purchase price is nothing but your total installment. The customer is supposed to pay you 1,50,000. Is it clear to you? Now, now, out of 1,50,000, what is the amount due in the current year? How much he will pay you at the most? Quite obviously, only 12 installment. So, Towards the opposite side, I am going to write by installment due during the year. See, it's a pretty long word, so I am using the short form. Installment due during the year. I-D-D-T-Y. Installment due during the year. How many installments were due during the year? Sit. Goods sold on higher purchase. Goods sold on higher at higher purchase price is 150. This is nothing but total installment, 15 installment of 10,000, correct? And out of that, 12 installments were due, I told you earlier. So, 120,000. Because in the current year, out of 15, 12 were due, that means 3 were not due. So, if 3 were not due, you will consider the value of those goods as if those goods were not sold, correct? So that is the reason you will write those goods as closing balance, balance carried down, that is, we can simply write balance carried down. And what is the balance carried down? That is, installment not due during the year. Installment not due during the year. Installment not due during the year not due during the year, DTY, during the year. So, installment not due during the year will be equal to 30,000. Out of 1,50,000, only 1,20,000 customer is supposed to pay us. 30,000 is not supposed to pay us. 
so that means it is not yet a part of sale so that is why we are reducing the sale and we will consider as if this much of stock is, is still by the end of the year is with us is it clear to you so this is closing balance of higher purchase stock account you need to understand that we are not having any opening stock in this particular question for example next year if i am going to prepare higher purchase stock account i will open it up with what we call this amount balance brought down 30000 now we come to installment due during the year first of all in the installment due during the year you have written here by installment due during the year correct First of all, I will write here opening balance brought down in this question. There is no opening balance, but I will write the installment due during the year because higher purchase debtors were supposed to pay us 1,20,000 rupees. Is it clear to you? So total amount due from debtors, first of all, you need to write here also. Now out of this, they have paid, that means 12 installment they were supposed to pay us, but how much they have paid? So you will write here by cash. The debtors paid us only 10 installments. So 10 into 10,000 will be equal to 1 lakh. You are going to write here 1 lakh. Is it clear to you? So at the end of the year, balance carried down. So this balance carried down of higher purchase debtors, what does it mean? It means installment due but not received. Installment due but not received installment due but not received so installment due but not received will be equal to 2 into 2 into 10,000 out of 12 only 10 installments were received so 20,000 are still due so after having prepared all these things now you have to find out the profit let us say I want to compute the profit by applying higher purchase status I just told you after having prepared all these three accounts I will prepare now higher purchase adjustment account it is also very important which you need to keep in your mind that in order to know the profit either through higher purchase data system or through trading system. Now you need not require to have a look over the first account that is stock in shop account or go down account. A stock in shop account or go down account is shall not be used at all in order to know the profit. Correct. So I need not require to look at this particular account that is stock in shop account. Is it clear to you? I will look into only second and third account. Is it clear to you? First of all, what you are supposed to do, for example, you will look into higher purchase stock account. You will look into the opening balance. Now, in this question, there is no opening balance. But first of all, you will look at this balance. Suppose if there would have been any balance, you would have written towards the credit side of higher purchase stock account as loading on opening stock loading on opening stock loading on opening stock means loading on opening stock of higher purchase stock account however in this particular question because there is no opening stock we cannot write any loading then what is the second item goods sold on higher at higher purchase price is equal to one lakh fifty thousand correct now this one lakh fifty thousand it is at higher purchase price so you are going to now write here load on goods sold on higher now what is the loading actually we already know the amount of loading that is 50,000 or what is the margin that is 50,000 loading and margin are one and same thing but we can also find it out for example this is the higher purchase price of 150,000 correct and rate of margin on higher purchase price is 1 by 3 because this is higher purchase price so i will apply this particular rate one by three so we can get fifty thousand this is the loading and now again in this account i will look at the closing balance i need not require to find out loading on higher purchase data account as you know loading is always extracted with respect to stocks opening stock closing stock or goods sold on higher so no question of any loading with respect to this item so you will take the loading of closing balance of higher purchase stock account. Now you will write this loading to the debit side, load on closing balance, load on closing balance of higher purchase stock account. Now what is higher purchase stock account? That is 30,000. And what is the amount of loading in it? Simply apply one by three. 
करेक्ट बिकॉज दिस आइटम इज एट हायर परचेज प्राइस बिकॉज दिस आइटम इज रिलेटेड टू हायर परचेज स्टॉक अकाउंट एंड हायर परचेज स्टॉक अकाउंट इज ऑलवेज प्रिपेयर एट हायर परचेज प्राइस सो यू विल अप्लाई वन बाय थ्री सो टेन थाउजेंड सो इन द करेंट अकाउंटिंग ईयर हाउ मच प्रॉफिट यू आर गोइंग टू रिकग्नाइज इन द करेंट अकाउंटिंग ईयर यू विल रिकग्नाइज ओनली फोर्टी थाउजेंड वर्थ ऑफ प्रॉफिट फोर्टी थाउजेंड वर्थ ऑफ प्रॉफिट is it clear to you and you will transfer it to your profit and loss account this is your balancing figure so that is how you will determine the amount of profit so through hard purchase trader system we have found out the profit now suppose i want to find out my result through hard purchase trading account while preparing the hard purchase trading account first of all you are going to write here opening balances you will write the opening balance of higher purchase stock account which is not there in this particular question then you are going to write write opening opening balance of higher purchase debtors account again higher purchase debtors opening balance is not given in the question then towards the opposite side you will write balance closing balance closing balance of these two items closing balance of these two items higher purchase stock account Now, higher purchase stock account closing balance is thirty thousand, correct? And higher purchase debtors closing balance is how much? That is equal to twenty thousand, isn't it? So twenty thousand balance you are going to write here twenty thousand. Remember one. The moment you have written a stock account, suppose open higher purchase stock account and closing stock we have written here, then loading of these item must be extracted. because in this question opening stock there is no opening stock so no question of writing any loading however closing balance is given so i will write here load on closing balance of higher purchase stock account that is 30000 into 1 by 3 that is equal to 10000 this is the loading you have written over here correct Besides that, besides the opening and closing balances, what else you need to write? Two more items. One, goods sold on hire. Goods sold on hire at higher purchase price you must write here. At higher purchase price you sold out one lakh fifty thousand worth of goods, but this is at higher purchase price, so you need to bring it to the cost. So you will put the loading on the opposite side. You will write here load on. Goods sold on hire. Load on goods sold on hire is equal to fifty thousand. We already know. However, we can show it in this manner: one fifty into one by three. That is equal to fifty thousand. And last item now: cash received. How much cash we have received? We have received one lakh. Now, if we will tally this account, you will get the same profit. One fifty, one eighty, two lakh, and by subtracting one sixty, you will still get forty thousand. So your answer will be same from both the methods. Correct. So sometime in the question, it is not given which method you have to follow. So then, in that particular case, it is your prerogative, it is your choice and discretion that whichever method you may like to use, you can use it. Is it clear to you or not? Now, after having a look over this particular conceptual question, conceptual discussion, now we move come over to the question. Just to make you understand better, I am thinking of picking up a question where, right? First, we start with seven point four. Actually, this is section six, so it is six point four. Correct. So. we take 6.4 first now in this particular question what is given to us a trader sold out goods on purchase goods on higher purchase at a profit of 25% on cost price your first thing as we used to do in branches your first thing the moment you are going to actually have a look over the rate immediately find out the rate because rate is given on cost price so cost plus margin cost plus margin is equal to higher purchase price instead of writing invoice price here we are going to write higher purchase price the rate is given on cost i will presume cost as 100 margin will be 25 and higher purchase price will be equal to 125 
your rate of margin on cost will be 25 by 100 that is 1 by 4 and your rate of margin on higher purchase price will be 25 by 125 that is equal to 1 by 5 correct now we will look over the question in this question, first of all, it is given that in the beginning, the seller is having a stock of rupees 30,000. At the end of the year, he is having a stock rupees 25,000. Overdue installment. What we mean by overdue installment? That means installment due during the year. Overdue installment means in simple words, th th these are the balances overdue installment for example in the imaginary equation which we i did earlier at the end of the year two installments were not received two installments were not received in the current year that means when i will move into the next year while preparing higher purchase debtors account i will write them as opening balance indirectly it means these installments have become overdue because you have crossed the date so basically this information overdue installment information is always related to higher purchase daters so in the higher purchase daters i will write opening balance and closing balance is it clear to you or not then goods with customer on higher purchase on 1 4 2021 now first of all goods with customer is related to higher purchase stock account i just told you a moment ago that higher purchase stock account is also known as goods sold on higher account stock with customer account correct and higher purchase stock account obviously so goods with customer means we are talking about higher purchase stock account we are talking about higher purchase stock account number one number two it is given goods with customer on higher purchase price on 1 4 2021 that means this is the opening balance which is given to you opening balance is 36,000. For example, in the imaginary equation, by the end of the current year, closing balance in the higher purchase stock account was 30,000. So next year, when I will prepare a higher purchase stock account, I will write them as goods with customer on higher purchase in the beginning. Is it it or not? Purchases. So in the current year, the seller purchased what we call 64,600. So this item is related with a stock and shop account stock in shop account go down account whatever you may like to write installment received basically means your cash received it means your cash received is it clear to you so once you have acquainted yourself with the what we call terminologies now rest of the things are very easy so let's have a look i will solve this question for you once again okay so first of all what we are supposed to do once here i am going to first of all prepare higher purchase sorry first of all stock with customer account stock in go down account sorry stock in go down account that is also known as stock in shop account correct stock in go down account we have prepared Besides the stock in go down account, we are supposed to prepare higher purchase stock account. So I will prepare higher purchase stock account. Also known as stock with customer account. Correct. Higher purchase stock account I am preparing. And then I will prepare higher purchase debtors account. A higher purchase debtors account is also known as installment due account. This is your higher purchase debtors account. It is also known as installment due account or overdue account. Installment due overdue, you consider them as same wordings. Now let's first of all look into the question. I hope you have the question sheets with you. Which question we are picking up? I have forgotten. Let me look into the sheets which we am having actually, right? 6.4. So first of all, information is stock in go down account is given to you as 30,000. So all you have to do is just write over here, balance brought down in his shop or go down, the trader is having 30,000 worth of stock. The next information which is given to us is that at the end of the year, he is having a stock in go down account equal to 25,000. So I will simply write balance carry down 25,000. After this, overdue installments are given. Now, I told you overdue installments are related to higher purchase status. So, overdue installment in the beginning 2000 is given. So, I will simply write as balance brought down. That is equal to 2000 in the beginning. And 
at the end it is given to us as 3000 so i will simply write 3000 after this it is given to us goods with customer on higher purchase on 1 4 2021 goods with customer that when we are talking about higher purchase stock account so customer is already having in higher purchase stock account <coughs> or balance brought down that is uh, goods with customer 36,000 it is given in the question so 36,000 I am going to write in higher purchase stock account that means seller is supposed to receive 36,000 these installment might have not fallen due in the last year so now they will become due correct so balance brought down so this much of stock is already there with the customer 36,000 then it is given purchases 64,600 we know that purchases we are supposed to write in a stock in go down account amount of purchases given to us purchases 64,600 this figure is given to us after this installment received installment received could you tell me where i am going to write installment received is related to daters obviously in the daters account you are going to write these terms isn't it or not so you will write installment received or cash received whatever you may like to write so cash received in this particular case is where it has gone 60,000 cash received after filling up all the information which was given in the question now the next thing which you need to understand is that which account you will tally first should i tally first account that is a stock in go down account first or should i tally second account higher purchased account first or should i tally higher purchase daters again here you will have to exercise caution you will look into that account which is containing the highest number of entries for example in the first account there are three entries in the second account we are having only one entry and again in the third account we are having three entries so that means first account and third account are having same number of entry so which account i will then out of these two which account i am going to actually tally first suppose if in this question second account would have got four entries i would have tallied it first is it clear to you or not so this is also quite a vital point that doesn't mean that we will have to tally them in the order in which we have framed the account it is very important however now the problem is that in this particular account first and third account are having common number of entries so now you will see which account is appearing first the first account obviously is appearing first so first you are going to tally stock in go down account this is also very important aspect of this particular system or these system should i say now 94600 minus 25000 what figure you are going to get as your balancing figure if i am not wrong it will be equal to 69600 now this 69600 could you tell me what is this particular uh, figure is all about this particular figure reflects the goods sold on hire but at cost at cost is it clear to you because this entire account is always prepared on cost this is the point you need to keep in your mind so you have written now here you have found out what is the amount of goods which you sold but you have found out only the cost price now you have to transfer this first of all to higher purchase stock account in the higher purchase stock account i will write goods sold on hire but problem is that in this account i will have to write the higher purchase price so i will have to find the higher purchase price in order to find out the higher purchase price first i will write the cost 69600 now what was the rate of profit on cost on cost 1 by 4 25 by 100 so i will apply that particular rate over here 1 by 4 now if i am going to apply 1 by 4 of 69600 i think it is equal to 17400 so 17400 you are going to add to 69600 to get i think 87000 so 87000 will be goods sold on hire is it clear to you or not because higher purchase stock account is always prepared on higher purchase price basis now out of these two accounts which are having highest higher number of entries 
it is having two entries now but it is having three entries so now you will first of all tell you this account this is the point which you need to keep in your mind while what we call framing these accounts correct this is 63 minus 2, so I will get the balancing figure 61,000. This 61,000 reflects total installment due during the year. Installment due during the year. Due during the year. So total installment due during the year 61,000. So you can understand it now better. That means the debtors were supposed to pay us 2000 in the beginning and besides that in the current year they were supposed to pay us 61 so total 63000 they were supposed to pay us they paid 60000 that is why closing balance is 3000 so by tally after having tallying this particular account we got this particular figure installment due during the year now installment due during the year will be put to the credit side of higher purchase stock account so i am going to write here installment due during the year Installment due during the year. Now, installment due during the year, it's a pretty long word. Installment due during the year. That is 61,000. We know that debit side of higher purchase stock account simply shows the total installment amount. Out of that, due during the year is 61. That is why we get what we call closing balance from this particular account. So, our closing balance will be, closing balance will be, balance carried down. What will be my closing balance if I am going to close this particular account? The closing balance will be, I will need calculator in this particular case. I think it is 62, but let me check. 36 plus 87 minus 61, that is equal to 62,000, I am correct. So, 62,000 is your closing balance. Is it clear to you? Balancing figure. So, in this particular account, first you found out this particular, this particular item. Is it clear to you? After having found out this particular item, what you did, you transferred it to the debit side of higher purchase stock account. But you converted it into higher purchase price. It is also very important. After that, you prepared this account and you found out this particular figure, installment due during the year. Then you took this particular figure to your higher purchase stock account and you wrote it towards this particular side. And why we write it? Don't simply cram. Try to understand. Why we write it? Because the, both these figures represents the total installment amount. Out of that, we want to pull out the figure of what we call installment which were due during the year to get what we call what was not due during the year. And that, what was not due during the year is nothing but that, that, that is your higher purchase stock account. So this is your balancing figure. The last balancing figure sometimes is also known as missing figure. In fact, in fact, I cannot straight away what we call find the profits because some figure generally remains missing and because some figure generally remains missing that is the reason actually in order to find that missing figure we have to prepare this particular account. Now as I told you if suppose I want to find out the profits through higher purchase data system in that particular case Suppose if I am following higher purchase data system or I want to find out profit through this particular system, in that particular case, what I am supposed to do now? In that particular case, first of all, I will prepare higher purchase adjustment account. Correct, higher purchase adjustment account. I told you what we are supposed to do in the higher purchase adjustment account. We have to simply look into higher purchase stock and pull out their loadings. That's all. So I will first of all look into higher purchase stock account. Opening stock is there. I will write over here load on. Opening stock load on opening stock of higher purchase stock account. Now opening stock. In this particular case of higher purchase stock account, 
I think was 36,000, right? It is 36,000 and closing is 62. So 36,000. This is at higher purchase price. This is at higher purchase price. So now you will have to find, you have to apply rate of profit on higher purchase price, 25 by 125 or 1 by 5. So 7,200, this will be the amount which you are going to write over here. Is it clear to you? 7,200. Then goods sold on hire, loading load on. Goods sold on hire, you must not forget to write. Goods sold on hire. Goods sold on hire is 87,000. Actually, we know the loading in advance, but it's still 87,000 into 1 by 5 because 87,000 now is your higher purchase price. Correct? So 17,400 you will get the loading amount. Now you will write towards the opposite side load on closing balance of higher purchase stock account. Load on closing balance of higher purchase stock account. What is the closing balance? The missing figure which you found out, correct? Last balancing figure, 62,000. So 62,000, you will apply the rate now, 62,000. 62,000 and you will apply the rate 1 by 5 to it to get what we call your loading. So that is equal to equal to 1260 plus 400. So 12,400 will be your loading part. Now all you have to do is just tell it 24,600 minus 12,400. So your profit will be equal to this much. Profit and loss account. That is 12,200. Correct? So this is the way you can find out profit. And similarly, if you want to find out the profit through higher purchase trading system, higher purchase trading system. If you want to find out the profit through higher purchase trading system, then what you are supposed to do in that particular case. In that particular case, Obviously, you will prepare higher purchase trading account. You will prepare higher purchase trading account. Correct? Higher purchase trading account. I told you, first of all, you do the framework. That means, first of all, you here write opening balance. I told you here, you are going to write opening balance of higher purchase stock account. And of course, higher purchase debtors account, also known as installment due account. And then you will write the balance carried down of these items. Balance carried down. You will write here higher purchase stock account and higher purchase debtors account. Besides these, what we are supposed to write? Goods sold on hire. We write here goods sold on hire. Correct? And then we simply write buy cash. These are the items which we have to write by cash received, that is installment received. And besides that, we will have to pull out the loading of what we call these three items, higher purchase, opening stock, closing stock and goods sold on hire. So all you have to do is to just fill up the information. Opening stock is 36,000. Higher purchase data's opening balance is 2,000 in this particular question. Closing balance of higher purchase stock account, we found it out, 62,000. And closing balance of higher purchase data's is 3,000. And how much cash actually we received, it is given in the question, 60,000 worth of cash we received. After having filled up all these items, now take the loading. <laughs> loading on. Opening stock of higher purchase stock account. Higher purchase stock account is 36,000. If you will take the loading, that is equal to 36,000 into 1 by 5, 7,200, which we have already computed. Similarly, goods sold on higher, we haven't written 87,000. And its loading will be written load on. Goods sold on hire. 
that is 87,000 into 1 by 4, 1 by 5, sorry, 17,400. And then you will take the loading of higher purchase stock account and you are going to write it over here. Load on closing balance of higher purchase stock account. That is 62,000 into 1 by 5, 12,400. Now if you will balance it now, you are going to get the same answer. Both the methods are going to fetch you same answer remember one thing so profit and loss account 12200 so this is how we, we shall have to actually move in this particular what we call chapter correct after having done this particular question now what i am going to do because we started with question number four i think so we will pick up question number question number 6.1 now Correct question number 6.1. I will show it to you once. Right. This is your 6.1, not 7.1. Correct. 6.1 is the question. Now, in this question, we are given a stock with customer at selling price. A stock, and first of all here, goods are sold at a margin of 60% to the cost. 60% to the cost, that means cost is 100. So rate of profit on cost will be 1 by 60, correct? And rate of profit on sales will be 60 by, rate of profit on cost will be 60 by 100. And rate of profit on sales will be 60 by 160, correct? First of all, you are given in this particular question, a stock with customer at selling price. A stock with customer, that means this information is related to higher purchase stock account, number one. Number two, because it is written on January 1, so that means this is the opening stock. Then question says that sales during the year, so sales during the year is nothing but your goods sold on higher. So goods sold on higher is equal to 43,560. Cash receipt from customer, I need not require to tell you, it is related to higher purchase debtors account. Higher purchase debtors account. Now question says that on 31st of December, a stock with customer, a stock with customer means we are talking about higher purchase stock account. We are talking about higher purchase stock account. And this is obviously going to be the closing balance. An installment due but not received. This is the closing balance of higher purchase debtors account because on 31st of December it is written that installment due but not received. So this is your higher purchase debtors closing balance. You must have noticed that in this particular question, we are not given. In this particular question, we are not given what we are not given. We are not given any information related to stock and shop account or go down account so but it is not going to create any problem let's solve this question first of all if you want to solve this question what you are supposed to do just pay attention for so it is your first target should be to compute what we call rates as i normally do first you write the cost margin margin is also known as load higher purchase price 160. so 60 by 160 will be rate of profit or cost and 60 by 160 will be rate of profit on higher purchase price. You can short them up 3 by 5 or 3 by 8. Correct? Because in this particular question, in this particular question, no information related to stock and shop account or go down account is given. I already told you that often you will find and more often than not, rather you are going to find that stock and shop information is not given. And moreover, information related to that particular uh, account is not of much, re much relevancy. So first, we will prepare in this case, this is the first account, higher purchase stock account. But first, let's have a look. A stock with customer at selling price. I told you this information is related to higher purchase stock account. So in the higher purchase stock account, I am going to write opening balance 10,800. Correct? 
then I look into the further information sales during the year. It means goods sold on higher at selling price means at higher purchase price. So this time goods sold on higher is already given to you at higher purchase price 43,560. Because this item is given to you, that is the reason no, no information related to stock and go down account is required. Generally, stock in go-down account is prepared to find out goods sold on hire. And in this question, goods sold on hire is given. That is why the stock in go-down account information is not given. Then, we have done this one, this one. Now, next item is cash receipt from customer. Obviously, we are going to write it in higher purchase debtors account. Higher purchase debtors account. In higher purchase debtors account, I am going to write 28,860, this much of cash we have received in the current year, correct? After this, it is given on 31st of December, stock with customer, stock with customer. Now, stock with customer, obviously in higher purchase stock account, you will write closing balance, correct? 24,000. Then next information in this particular question is, is installment due but not received. This is closing balance of higher purchase debtors. So in the higher purchase debtors, I will write 2,500. We are preparing two accounts in this particular case. And this account is carrying two entries because item which I have marked shows that only these entries have been passed in this particular account so far. Correct? And in this particular account, we have three entries. So obviously, we are going to first of all close out this particular account. Now here, opening balance 10,800 is given, 43,560 is given. This total reflects the total installment amount. If I will add both these two, it simply reflects total installment amount, total installment which we are supposed to receive from the customer. Correct? This is the total installment amount. Now, we are already given at the end of the year closing balance. Now, what is the closing balance? Closing balance means installment not due. Higher purchase stock account closing balance means installment not due. Installment not due during the year. And we know that as far as total installments are concerned, it is divided into two parts. One, installment not due during the year and installment due during the year. So that is the reason balancing figure which you are going to get 30,360 will be your installment due during the year. Is it clear to you? So you have found out this figure. I need not require to tell you where you are going to post it. Now you are going to post it to this account. So now in this account you have cash received, you have closing balance and now you have got this item. So 1,000 will become your balancing figure. This 1,000 will become your balancing figure and this is also commonly re referred to as missing figure. Correct? So now we are in a position to prepare the higher purchase adjustment account and higher purchase trading account. Although either of these two accounts is needed to find out what we call profit depending upon the question. So first we shall prepare higher purchase adjustment. In order to prepare this account, all we have to do is just take the loading of 10,800, take the loading of 43,560 and take the loading of this balance. So we have taken the loading of these items. In the higher purchase stock adjustment account, I have written the stock reserve. You can write a stock reserve, loading or margin, whatever you may like to write. Loading or stock reserve on opening balance, that is loading on opening balance of higher purchase stock account, 10,800 into 3 by 8. You will, have, you will have to apply the rate of margin on higher purchase price. So 4050 will be the amount. Similarly, goods loading on goods sold on higher, 43,560 is the higher purchase price. Multiply it with 3 by 8 to get this figure. And then closing stock was 24,000, multiply it with 3 by 8 to get the loading portion. And this will become your, what we call, profit. Correct? Similarly, now you can find out, you can prepare what we call higher purchase trading account. First of all, your target should be to write the opening balances. Then closing balances. Once you have written these items, then you write goods sold on higher and cash received. After that, all you have to do is to just take the loadings of opening stock to the opposite side, goods sold on higher to the opposite side, and loading of closing stock to the opposite side, so you can you will get the same results. Is it clear to you or not? Clear? So, after 7.1, 
just wait i will do 7.2 don't worry about that even 7.3 i will do for you 7.3 i am telling it is actually 6.3 6.3 6.2 i will do it for you and then 6.4 we have already done 7.5 or 6.5 in this question in this question in fact this question can be done by yourself ram sells goods on higher purchase basis at a profit of 50 percent on cost 50 percent on cost so 50% on cost that means rate of profit on cost 50 by 100 and on selling price it will be equal to 1 by 3. Higher purchase stock account is given. Higher purchase stock account very clearly given. So this is the opening balance. You will have to write it in higher purchase stock account. Installment due account means higher purchase debtors account. You will write this balance as opening balance in higher purchase debtors account. Goods sold on higher purchase during the year. Of course you will write it in higher purchase stock account and at selling price it is given correct so in this question also no information related to stock and shop account or go down account is available cash receipt from customers that means you will put this account in higher purchase debtors cash receipt cash received 60,000 now in this particular question we are given goods repurchased installment due 2000 valued at 500 Goods repurchased installment due 2000 as valued 500. Now, this is the important point in this particular question because we haven't talked about anything so far with respect to goods repurchased. So, I will have to solve this particular question for you. And higher purchase stock account is 30,000. This is the closing balance of higher purchase stock account. And installment due on 31st of December, and this date is wrong, 31st December 2000, whatever. Closing, this is the closing balance of installment due. Correct? I have already told you in this particular question, we were given opening balance, higher purchase stock account opening balance, then just 87,000 is at selling price, not at cost. At selling price is given to us 87,000. And then goods sold on higher purchase during the year. Before that, installment due balance is also given. So in higher purchase status account, we have written here 5,000. And then in this particular question, cash received from higher purchase in higher purchase status, we shall write it as I told you earlier. And then it is given goods repurchased. Now goods repurchased, pay attention. Goods repurchased I have written in higher purchase debtors account to the credit side. That means whenever we are going to repurchase the goods, my first entry will be goods repurchased account debit to higher purchase debtors account. And we will presume, we will presume if nothing is mentioned in the question. In fact, in this question it is mentioned installment due. That means this amount was due. But debtors might have defaulted, so that is why we repurchase 2000 worth of goods from the debtors. If as a trader you are going to repurchase the goods from the debtors, quite obviously what will happen, your debtors will pay you no more as far as these 2000 are concerned. Because you have taken back these goods. So you repurchase the goods on which 2000 worth of installments were due so quite obviously your higher purchase debtors balance will reduce by 2000 so that is the reason in the higher purchase debtors account i have written goods repurchase 2000 and then i will also prepare a goods repurchased account wherein i am going to write higher purchase debtors 2000 rupees it will always be given in the question at what value you repurchase the goods as is given in this particular question that these goods have been repurchased at rupees 500 because 2000 worth was customer is supposed to pay you on these goods but when you took back these goods you valued it only at 500 that means as a trader you are incurring a loss because goods having a value of 2000 are being valued at 500 that means you are incurring a loss because you are incurring a loss, your next entry will be higher purchase adjustment account debit to goods repurchased account. This entry will be 
with the amount of goods repossession and this entry will be with rupees 1500 that is loss why it is a loss because 2000 was the value and you valued it at 500 so 1500 will be your loss so in this particular case in the first entry goods repurchased to higher purchase data so towards the credit side of the data so i have written goods repurchased and goods repurchased account debit side we have written 2000 now in the second entry higher purchase adjustment account debit to goods repurchased account and goods repurchased account is getting credited so towards the credit side of the goods repurchased account i am going to write 1500 higher purchase adjustment account and later on when i am going to prepare higher purchase adjustment account this 1500 will also find place in the higher purchase account also. For example, in higher purchase adjustment account, which I will prepare later on. In the higher purchase adjustment account, you are going to write goods repurchased account that is loss on repossession 1500. That means in higher purchase adjustment, if there would be any loss on repossession, that loss will also be written in the higher purchase adjustment account. Is it clear to you or not? Then, uh, regarding this, what else is given in the question? So, goods repossession treatment, now you are already aware of. But still, I think I should do this particular question for you so that you shouldn't commit any mistake. Well, I will prepare one. This is your six point. Which question? This is six. Let me keep the question sheets before me. Six point two, six point three. I think this question was six point four, six point five. Isn't it? If I'm not wrong. Right. This is the question. So, in order to solve this particular question, first of all, we shall prepare, this is 6.5. As usual, we are going to prepare, first of all, in this particular case, stock in shop account is not needed. So, higher purchase stock account. This is one account which I need to prepare. Where, where is the scale actually? I am searching for higher purchase stock account. Correct. Besides that, besides the higher purchase stock account, I will prepare higher purchase debtors account. Higher purchase debtors. Number one. And besides that, you are supposed to prepare in this particular account. These are the two major accounts. Besides that, you will have to prepare in this particular question, goods repurchased account. I will prepare for you goods repurchased account also. Goods repurchased account. Higher purchase stock account. Higher purchase status account. Goods repurchased account. And just to make you understand, I am simultaneously preparing higher purchase adjustment account. Just to make you understand better. Correct? Higher purchase adjustment account. If I am preparing higher purchase adjustment account, that means I am solving the question through data system. Although, first, this account, this one and goods repurchased account are common accounts. These will have to be prepared at any cost. Now your first item, if you look into your question, higher purchase stock at selling price is given. Correct, higher purchase stock at selling price. So first of all, you will write here opening balance 
and the opening balance amount is 9000 the moment i am going to write opening balance now onwards now onwards you make a habit of writing the loading towards this side so a stock reserve or loading whatever you may like to write so a stock reserve on opening stock of higher purchase stock account 9000 into now rate of loading on selling price is 1 by 3 so you are going to write here 3000 is it clear to you or not the next item is installment due on 1st of january installment due is always related to debtor's account that means we are talking about the opening balance of higher purchase debtor's account that is 5000 the next item is goods sold on higher purchase during the year now goods sold on higher goods sold on higher is equal to 87000 now goods sold on higher it is at higher purchase price in the higher purchase adjustment account we shall write goods sold on higher stock reserve 87000 into 1 by 3 into 1 by 3 will be how much 87000 into 1 by 3 i will have to compute 87,000 divided by 3, 29,000. This question rate of profit is 50% on cost. So on selling price 50 by 150 or 1 by 3, 29,000 is the loading. After having written loading, next item cash received from higher purchase customer during the year. If you will receive cash from the higher purchase customers, you are going to write it towards the credit side of the debtor's account. Now cash received as per the question is 60,000. So you are going to write here 60,000. Correct. Next item is goods repurchased installment due 2000 as valued 500. This was the point I was trying to tell you. Whenever you are going to receive the goods. Correct. First of all, you will write the entry goods repurchased account debit. Goods repurchased account debit. To higher purchase debtors account. Now it is very important. Higher purchase debtors account will be credited with installment due. With installment due only. However, in this particular case, it is clearly written in the question that goods which you are repurchasing, the installment due was 2000. So entire amount 2000 will be credited to higher purchase debtors. Suppose if in the same question it would have been written in this manner, goods repurchased, and in bracket it would have been written in this manner that higher per, uh, installment due is 2000 and installment not due is 1000. Because the goods which we repurchase from you, it might be some of the installment might be due and some of the installment might be not due. Suppose if it would have been written that installment due 2000 and not due 1000, if it would have been written, then you would have written here to higher purchase stock account with the portion of installment not due. As you know, installment not due is always related to stock account. Correct? In this question, there is no installment not due because in the question it is clearly written installment due. And with the total of these two, you are going to debit the goods repurchased account. So in this question, logically, your entry is goods repurchased to higher purchase debtors only, but it could also be goods repurchased to higher purchase debtors to higher purchase stock account also. Correct? So because goods repurchased account is getting debited, so towards the debit side of the goods repurchased account, I am going to write here to higher purchase debtors account. To higher purchase debtors 2000. To higher purchase stock account nil because there is no portion of the installment which is not due on these goods. Correct? Then, because you have written in the goods repurchased account to higher purchase debtors, in the higher purchase debtors, you will write here buy goods repurchased, that is 3000. And on the debit side of the goods repurchased, you have written to higher purchase stock account. So, in the higher purchase stock account also, you will write buy goods repurchased in case if there would have been any. Is it clear to you? This is the full treatment of goods repurchased. Now, 
at what value these goods were estimated 500 so there is all there is a loss that loss will be transferred to the debit of higher purchase adjustment account your next entry will be higher purchase adjustment account debit to loss on reposition to loss on reposition Now, in this case, loss has taken place. Is it clear to you? So, you are going to write, first of all, loss on reposition, that is goods repossessed account. Loss is to the extent of 1,500. So, when you will prepare higher purchase adjustment account, because it is getting debited, you will write here goods repossessed, goods repossessed. In bracket, you will write loss on reposition. Loss on reposition is equal to 1500. Is it clear to you or not? Perfect. So, and in the goods repossessed account, because goods repossessed account is getting credited, so you will write here buy higher purchase adjustment account. Buy higher purchase adjustment account. That is equal to 1,500. And now, whatever balance is there, you will simply write it as balance carried down. So, this is the full treatment of goods repurchase. Next item in the question is given to you, higher purchase stock at selling price 30,000. Higher purchase stock account at selling price, so balance carried down. Higher purchase stock closing balance it is given. That means installment not due during the year is 30,000. And installment due closing balance, that means higher purchase balance is given. Higher purchase balance is given to you as 9,000. Goods repurchased account is already prepared. Higher purchase adjustment account. Adjustment account will, or will always be prepared later on because these are the common accounts. So out of these two accounts, obviously this account is having four entries. So first of all, I am going to tally this particular account. If I am going to tally this particular account, what will be the <coughs> balancing figure which I am going to get in this particular question? 63 plus 972 minus 5. So here we will get the balancing figure as installment due during the year. Installment due during the year. I am writing in short form. This figure shows that total installment due during the year was 66,000. As we know that installment due during the year is taken to the higher purchase stock account. So I will write here installment due during the year is equal to 60,000. And 66,000, I have written 60,000. So total is 96 and 96. This account is getting automatically tallied. This account is automatically getting tallied. After this now, you can prepare, because I have already prepared higher purchase adjustment account. We have taken the loading, opening loading, closing, uh, sorry. Opening loading, loading on goods sold on hire and closing loading. Closing loading we haven't taken. Stock reserve. Stock reserve on closing stock of higher purchase stock account. Higher purchase closing stock is 30,000 into 1 by 3. That is equal to 10,000. And then you can find out the answer. Your answer will be equal to, equal to, as is given in the uh, net answer is with me, 20,500 should be your answer. 32 minus 11,500 is fine. So, profit or loss account. Is it clear to you? Now, you can prepare higher purchase trading account by yourself. Actually, you will write everything in the same manner. Only thing is that in higher purchase trading account, now you will write goods repurchased at value at which you took it back that means 500 that's all nothing more for example i will show you 
in this particular question when you will prepare higher purchase trading account so only difference is that you will write here goods repurchased mm. sometime you no know, this pen creates lots of problem anyway i will write in this manner goods repurchased so goods repurchased will come at estimated value rest of the item you will write in usual manner for example opening closing balances of stock and higher purchase status besides this, these are the opening balances you have written and then you will write the goods sold on hire you will write the cash received you will take the loading portion in general usual manner and you will get the same answer that is 20500 this is how you are supposed to do so i hope till up to this particular point now you can do it so shall meet you then in the next session and i hope that you must have enjoyed these sessions so let me know of your feedback too